What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five, the man, Eric Sheet Tabor. We are going to be talking through today's Monday slate. Hope everybody had a great weekend. I didn't play much this weekend, um, but I had a good I had a good Friday, actually. Um, uh, and I just didn't quite get there, but it was a lot of good lineups. I made a little bit of money on, on DK and really bad on FanDuel, but skip the weekend playing as usual. Uh, Sheets, how did you do? And uh, yeah, let us know. I, 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 had a lot of, I had a lot of fun with DFS over the weekend. I played like all the sports, all the slates or whatever. Baseball, I didn't cash a ticket the whole weekend. Which is annoying because because baseball is where I put you know where where the buy-ins are the most right right um so so I, I was I was under the gun to succeed in other sports and I and I ended up chopping the what is it the Xfinity thing for like three thousand which was good uh-huh. um and then um, oh that's awesome I put like two LOL slates for like like a thousand each or something so it I I I, I survived the weekend uh pretty much yeah uh, even though baseball was 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 no good. But um, yeah, but I'm uh, I'm ready to uh, to press on. All right, let's do it, man. Well, it's a fun slate. Let's pull your screen up and we'll go game by game. Um, you know, it's a little little bit of a smaller slate, so we're gonna have to try and find ways to get different. Oh, yeah, you got you got to really try to tell me how to get off the chalk here because I I, I have the just basically my fourteen possible teams are reduced to like two and a half. Right, and my pitchers are reduced to like maybe two and a half or three. Right. So. So we got, so we got, we got to figure this out. Well, the good thing is that I think that, well, my favorite. Good, the good thing is we're right in the first two games. So yeah, they're right away. Um, <laughs> Baltimore is my favorite stack on the slate uh, to get in, you know, just to go straight to it. But uh, I, I actually think Baltimore is a really is reasonable as well. Uh, even as a mini stack or as a full stack. Wait, wait, you just said Baltimore is my favorite and also Baltimore is reasonable. Wait, you, no, no. I'm sorry. Toronto is my favorite. Baltimore. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> um, I think they were reasonable to to combo stack these guys. Um, Rushman. Uh, I mean, really, any way you want to do it. But M- Mullins, Rushman, even Mullins in the lefty lefty doesn't bother me. Mount Castle's cheap. Uh, Tyler Nevin, if he's in the lineup, is minimum cost. I think that th- these are both really reasonable stacks, and I'm going to be very high on Toronto, especially. Well, the thing is, I mean, just to call it what it is, there's, there's you can play almost whatever hitting you want today. There's, there's just no, there's no salary at pitcher, you know, um, you have yeah nobody costs two you. best pitchers at nine K, you know what I mean? Pretty much. And that's it. That's all there is. I mean, everything else is, well, not that that's all there is, but everybody else is lower. So, right. uh, you know, if you want to play Toronto, uh, you, you could probably do it. And with the exception of, of Guerrero, everybody's pretty cheap, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, Springer being out only only increases your ability to play these guys. You know, because they'll right. replace them with somebody, right? They're probably, I don't know, they might they might put both catchers in, right? Um, I don't know exactly what they're going to yeah, do. Yeah, I think I think it's very possible that they do that. Yeah. Um, but I, I, maybe get my 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 guy Espinal in. I don't know if he's been playing, but uh, it'll be hard for him to get in with Wit there. It depends on whether they play right. BG or not. Right. So in any case, uh, Toronto rates. For me, is one of the top two stacks, and I okay with respect to Kikuchi as a pitching option. I mean, I got him. I have him lower than the than two other cheapies, but I don't really like the two other cheapies. So it's possible that I might go to him if that's in fact what I decide to do. I mean, I'm gonna have to. You have to give me a reason to not play Snell Bass if you want to know the truth. But we'll we'll, we'll get to those if we get to them. I guess. Yeah, I hear you on that. Um... <laughs> I, I I don't think the, I mean you won't get you won't get ownership on Kikuchi that much. I think he'll have a little bit, but I I, I can I can understand it. But I, I've sort of sided with the bat, the bats in this one personally. I don't blame you. Yeah. <laughs> um. And let me see if where where Baltimore ranks for me because I do want to play, you know, somebody else except for the two chalks. Um. Uh I mean they're fine, I guess. But like I said, these they're fine. Like everybody else is fine. So if you're gonna pivot off of the two chalks, you may as May as well take take somebody like this. I actually prefer. I don't know. We'll get to other games, but but I I think I'd rather pre- I'd prefer playing teams against a chalky pitcher, at least a moderately chalky pitcher. If I'm going to go off the chalky hitting, I don't know. We'll see. Mm-hmm. But uh, hey, I'm 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 always down for Rushman or or um or Mullins or, or Hayes or all these guys. One of them and Santander I like. Mm-hmm. Um, and no longer with the team. Um, but yeah, I'll I'll, I'll put Baltimore in my list. Yeah, I think that uh, Mount Castle, Mount Castle Hayes are are two interesting bats for Baltimore. I think for Toronto, if you want to try and get a little bit different, you could always do the bottom stack. Use uh, 
and use Jansen as your catcher instead of Kirk, which will be much, much less lower on than probably even the projections have. And also you can, uh, I think Witt, if he's further down, if he's batting seventh that tonight, I think he might be a little bit lower owned at his price than some of the other guys. So just ways to try and get a little bit different inside your stacks. And you can always, I don't, I, I'm not going to probably leave Guerrero off, but that is a way you could do it. <laughs> so I've, I've got an idea. Okay. So here's an idea. As, as we, as we talk about the Cincinnati Mets game, right? So as I, I, I alluded to before, I mean, you know, Bassett, I have is rated, you know, uh, one of the top two pitchers, and I have the Mets rated one of the top two stacks, right? Um, so for me, it's like Mets and Toronto are going to be like enormous chalk. Um, they're going to rate the highest, and Bassett's going to be enormous chalk and rate one of the highest. So that's a decision that, that you're going to have to make. I think if I'm going to look for, and again, this is a real minor point, but I think I want to make it anyway. Mm -hmm. So, so at first base and not to put the whole slate around first base, right. But at first base, you have Alonzo and you have Vogelbach, right. And then in the Toronto game, you have Guerrero. And so suffice it to say that between all three of these, look, some people will, will, will play Vogelbach instead of Alonzo, right. It makes perfect sense. Um, if you want to do that. And some people will play Guerrero. I think that if you add up the ownership of those three first basemen, it might end up being a hundred percent. You know what I mean? Or like close. Mm -hmm. So, so if you could find a first baseman other than those three, I think you're, I think that's probably, and you get a home run out of them somehow, like anywhere else on the slate. Yeah. I think that's something that you can do. Um, that's, that's really my only opinion on this game is that, is that, that the Mets look like a great stack and you have a decision to make it first base, which way to go. And, and FanDuel, for example, like, I think people are going to do this. Obviously, they'll play. And listen, there's a 1500 today, right? On FanDuel, and mm -hmm. and and people are going to do the double Vogelbach Alonso thing, right? But then Guerrero, people might also try to put, I don't know, maybe the double catchers in Toronto. I don't know. So, like I said, in, in that position as well on FanDuel, if you could somehow, some way, play a first baseman outside of those two games and get lucky with that person, whoever it is, mm -hmm. then you're going to be well ahead of the field, at least that position, if that means anything. So I, my, I, 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 only, I like that. That's my only opinion on that game. No, I, I think that's a really good point. Cause I, I, of course, like you have a guy uh, in Dunn who's been just getting rocked in the minor leagues. So of course they bring him up to the major leagues and the bad bullpen behind him. It's, it's really hard not to like, you know, these, the, these guys, uh, the Mets, the early projections are a little low on on Alonzo's ownership, actually, which is kind of – I mean, I know it's expensive, but I think people figure – I guess they'll just try and – I don't think they're right, though. I, I think that he ends up getting more ownership than Vogelbach, personally. Um, but I like your idea in general. I, I just – it's hard for me to want to stack these teams and ignore those guys. But, look, it's baseball. It doesn't mean they have to have a big day today. Right. If they do, if you get that home run somewhere else and you get a little different and maybe a little cheaper, uh, it allows you to differentiate your build. So I don't mind that. Um, but I, yeah, the Mets, I have the Mets as a clear number two, the Blue Jays is a clear number one, and we're going to have to try and find other ways to, to try and get a little different. You can probably, you know, play James McCann in your Mets stacks to, to get off the board. Although I like the catchers for Toronto a lot better, um, but it's going to be hard to get anything too low owned on the Mets side of things today. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, Washington, Chicago, uh, before we even say it, I'll, I'll just say right now that the wind is blowing in hard from left field. It's 16 miles an hour. This is a game only has a seven and a half total. And it's a game where, I mean, this, this would have been the, if, it, if the wind's going the other way, the Cubs would be to me, the other, the other natural team. And it would have probably been a really popular. There's no way I'm playing them into the wind. Uh, I think if you do play anybody, you want to play the lefties as, as hitters go. And then there's something else you could do at pitching is Keegan Thompson. Yeah. Um, I, I have no problem rolling him out there against the, the, I don't this ridiculous lineup from the nationals, um, especially with the wind blowing in. So I think he and Thompson is completely viable as a, as a way to get different in your, with your pitching. And I don't see him getting hardly any ownership right now. I think that's going to, I think it's going to increase as, as the day goes on and people start talking about the weather, but I think he and Thompson is completely viable today. I actually have him at like 15 to 20% ownership right now. Oh, do you? Okay. I've got him a little lower, but I see, I, I hear you. Yeah. And, and especially when the wind comes in or whatever, but the thing is, I don't think he's going to be that highly owned for the reasons we discussed before we even started the slate is that you just don't need it. Um, you don't need it. But so, he could, so, but he could beat those guys. That's possible. right. Well, well, right. But as, as far as popularity goes, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Like, I don't think people who have better play Keegan Thompson, so I'm jamming him. I think people, well, the people that play him because they actually think he's going to score more fantasy points. Than these other guys. I mean, that's that's something different, right? Right. Um, 
Um, and quite honestly, I, I don't think he scores more fantasy points than than those top guys. Um, but could, I suppose, <laughs> it's possible. Yeah. Who yeah. says that Snell can't have, make this that game where, you know, right. that game, you know, uh, is the best way I can describe it. Um, so uh, I think that uh, so that's, this was actually the guy that I didn't like. Like, remember I mentioned that there were um, possible um, – Actually, I mentioned there were two kind of chalky sub seven Ks I didn't like around seven Ks. This one I wanted to get your opinion on because I didn't I didn't know if he had the strikeouts to to make it work. Keegan Thompson? Yeah. Absolutely he does. He does. Okay. I want to yeah, ask Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, he's had he's had some games where he didn't have many strikeouts, but he, I mean he 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 had put up 31 two starts ago. He put up 26 mm-hmm. against the Dodgers, two starts okay. before that. He put up 26, two starts before that against Pittsburgh, 29 to the start before that against Atlanta. He's All got right. strikeout stuff. Um and it's Washington, who's a pesky, who was a pesky team that doesn't strike out all that much and is really patient, um, even though they, their offense was bad. But now you throw in Luke Voigt instead of Josh Bell, who strikes out, and then you throw in uh, any, anybody instead of uh, Soto. And all of a sudden, you've got you know a lineup that's got the, the middle of the order is Kiebert Ruiz um, and uh, Yadiel Hernandez. It's just There's just not a whole lot to be too afraid of. So maybe it's not the best strikeout matchup, but I do think he has the upside to potentially get there uh, if things go his way. So, yeah. So um, I'll, I'll keep him. I'll keep him on my list. Um, so we'll, I guess we can move on. Yeah, let's move on. Talk, talk about talk about Gallon and, and All right. And- so so Arizona Pittsburgh I think is pretty interesting actually because um, Arizona is actually going to be showing up as kind of like the value value play um, uh, below. You know if you. If, to go along with Mets, to go along with uh, what's his name, uh, Toronto. So they're mm-hmm. going to show up as to be a, as good value. Um, and Beatty's a guy that obviously, you know, a lot of DFS guys like to target. And he, they're showing up for me as well. So the first thing I want to look for is is if I want to do this, who's at first base, right? Because that's what I was talking about. Like for Arizona, I don't know. What, well, Christian Walker has 26 home runs this year, right? Yeah. So So that's good enough for me, right? Um, so I think he's a pretty, he's a, he's a pretty good play. Um, I have a feeling Christian Walker for what it's worth will be higher on than Vogelbach will be, for example. That's interesting. Because I think if people play the Mets, they are going to stack Alonzo mostly, but that's just okay. my thought. Go um, ahead. and then the other thing I would say is I have Gallon rated as kind of like the second best, um, you know, well, considering price, like overall, but behind Snow and ahead of, ahead of Bassett, but, but, but sort of not really, but I have Gallon rated really high. And I also have him rated at 30% ownership. Um, I think this would be the one where I would take my shot against them. Like I, I, I'm, I, I might take a shot against a, a not an unproject, a terribly projected, no own Pittsburgh. Um, that, that's, um, I don't know. I just, maybe I've just had some luck with these guys. I know, I know where I'm going, you know, I'll play Cruz, I'll play Reynolds, I'll play Hayes, you know, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And maybe take a shot with that. But again, all I'm trying to do is, is something other than Mets Toronto. Um, so I, I I I would take a shot with that. I don't I don't I'm not particularly interested in Gallon. Um, I I would uh, so for me that that's where I'm projection wise. Gallon rates really high, but in actual application, I'm probably going to avoid it. I'll probably end up playing some Pittsburgh against them, and that's just kind of what I'm doing. It. Yeah, I feel completely fine with Gallon. Uh, the ownership. I don't think you're getting enough of a discount off the other guys to to make him a priority. That's where I'm sort of struggling with it. Um, I like the idea of playing some Pittsburgh bats. I do think that there is there is some some opportunity there, and you don't need to go crazy with it either. You don't necessarily need to go full stack. I got, like that's what I kept the, all those lines. I was finishing third and fourth. I, a couple of them were Pittsburgh, like just Cruz and Reynolds or something like that, or, or Cruz Reynolds and, and Hayes, and uh, they're all affordable. But if you did want to go full stack, you've got Ben Gamble at twenty five hundred. Also, um, yeah. Cal Mitchell, who again the bottom of the order, but again you probably don't need to play guys at the bottom of the order here to get different. Um, so I, I do think this is a, a I do I do agree that, that that would be a good way to differentiate is to possibly use Pittsburgh, especially in large field stuff. And uh, Gallon I have as the third best pitcher on the slate, but uh, the ownership is, uh, you know, I don't want to say troubling, but it's just we have a lot of we have a lot of pretty chalky guys. And 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 may, may, maybe you can make an argument for Gallon and we'll get into Snell in just a second, because I, I you know, we, we, we know Snell has is, is volatile. We know that uh, San Francisco is, you know, 
they're they're definitely not as good as they were last year. They're significant. They're I mean they were they were kind of walking between raindrops last year anyway. But but, but they but they have tricks, you know. <laughs> they, they've got yeah they're they're pesky enough and yeah. maybe you could do that. But um, I'll jump over to that game actually because not, I not, not only that they have tricks. They probably have like well, they'll probably have like nine righties up there, right? And they'll they'll they find all these guys that I get that pinch hit for my guys. They'll probably end up like starting them all, right? And like let them let them go two trips through the lineup. And like take pitches and do whatever, and maybe hopefully right. grind Snell out of there. And then the good guys will come later. I don't know. That's it. That's uh, right. And San and, Francisco looks like they they feel like Tampa. They feel like they have fifty guys on the on the lineup, you know, yeah. um, on the roster that that get that get minutes, so to speak. So, um, absolutely, that would be my you know only trepidation for playing Snell. But honestly, the slate just stinks, you know. Yeah. Um, so. But who do you, who do you like better, really, like Snell or Bassett? Don't you don't wouldn't you think Bass is just like the safer, the safer play with the know. matchup? I think you'd say Bassett is the safer play. Um, I think Snell has a lot more upside. Okay. Um, he if that the thing that's scary about fading Snell on a small slate is he. I mean, he could he could win this slate by yeah, he puts up thirty five. You don't even need any other players in your lineup. Like, yeah, he he put he's gonna have ten or fifteen more points than than anybody else a lot of the time here. I feel like so. Um, but, but at the same time, you know, we, we, we know there's a downside there. And if they, if they get, if they get him to, to work early on, he's not going to make it very long into the game. Cause he does get, he gets himself into trouble with that pitch count. San Francisco is an interdivision team that understands that, uh, it's still hard for me not to have him as my number, I guess I would say my number one, but it's weird because I feel much more comfortable with Bassett going the six innings than I do Snell. So like on FanDuel and getting the quality start and I feel better about Bassett's win equity than I do Snell's, although they both have a good chance to, to get there. Um, so it's, it's, it's really close between those two for me. I, um, but at the same time, what, one thing I'm considering doing is that what about, you know, what about playing San Diego today? Like hmm. uh, I think that they're going to be way overlooked. Uh, they're expensive They're This is a good lineup and you've got guys like Will Myers who are cheap, who you could kind of balance it out with. Uh, Alex Wood has been starting to get hit a little bit more and more. I think that, you know, maybe it's just that the Dodgers were running on him the other day, which is surprising. I think they, they ran a few times on him. Um, and I think it's probably just cause they know Alex Wood because of the, he was on our team forever, but I, I feel like there's, there's enough, there's enough upside here to at least get some San Diego. Like, look, you could play Machado Soto and bell or something like that, or Machado Soto and, and, and Drury. That's really expensive. And then try to use the the cheaper pieces of of other stacks you like or something like that. I just feel like San Diego does have upside here against Wood, and just because the matchup is and Wood Wood is a, a above average major league pitcher, uh, that San Diego San Diego lineup is is very strong, and I feel like there is massive upside for them. So I think San Diego might be my favorites of if I was going to do another full stack, even the one I like the most, even though they're expensive. Um. Any chance Josh Bell can hit a home run? Yeah, I like that. Like if you play at, this, fir at first base. I mean, yeah. why not? It's not. It's not the ideal side for him. He's he's better against. He has more power against righties than he does against lefties. But he still hits home runs off of lefties as well. Um, six and one hundred and forty-eight at bats this year. One hundred forty-six at bats this year. Um, yeah, I I think that he. I think that that that's a viable route, and I think that. You know, you play him and him and Soto or him and Machado and Soto. Like nobody's like Soto in the lefty lefty is not going to get looked at much today. Um, hasn't been as good power wise against lefties this year as he was the second half of last year. And not the beginning of not the first half of last year, but the second half. So I, I, I don't know. I'm talking myself into a San Diego stack today. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Right. <laughs> we have to get different somehow. I mean, that's that, that that's the one that's most appealing to me that in, in Baltimore, Baltimore should get a little more ownership even than San Diego. All right, Cole Irvin in the best, what's becoming like the best matchup in baseball against these Angels. He didn't do much against them last time. He's getting a little bit of love from what I'm seeing. I think I'm probably like on the side of mostly passing. However, I want to throw out uh, Suarez as a potential option in the same vein. Now, maybe to outscore these guys is going to be tough. But if you're going to play, like, I think you could, I don't think it's wrong to necessarily go with a, again, you don't really need it. That's part of the problem. But a Suarez and uh, what's it called lineup? A Suarez and let's say uh, Keegan Thompson or something. It would certainly differentiate your build, and you'd have uh, 
you have low owned guys who who can get you 20 to 30 if, if things go really right in a great matchup. And Suarez has decent case stuff. I put up 20 against these guys the other day. Um, just throwing them out there. It's going to be hard for hard not to prioritize the other guys. So I'm just trying to think of anything different to do. And uh, maybe Suarez is, is one of those things. At the same time, Suarez can get a little bit all over the place. So using some of the A's value, I don't think would be a bad idea either. And the one thing that does concern me about Suarez, he just didn't never really throws enough pitches. He threw 91 in his last start. That's pretty much, I think, a season high. Um, so yeah, so I'm sort of I'm sort of up in the air with this game, but I could see myself ending up either using Suarez or some value from the uh, Oakland side because they're just very very cheap uh, at the top with Bride and Pinder probably, and uh, there's some pop there. And Jed Lowry is but there. There's your first baseman sheets. Two K Jed Lowry at first. Um, that's a way you could certainly get different, although he hasn't hit a home run versus a lefty all season. Um, but yeah, I, I'm open to using some Oakland value if I need it, but the, this is mostly a cross off with the exception of maybe using a little Suarez for me. Yeah. I, Suarez alongside of Thompson and Kikuchi, you know, I, I feel as though all three of those guys could, could get some ownership, but, but once again, just the way pricing works, I just don't think any of them are going to get that much. Mm -hmm. so you have this thought that that these guys could outscore what's this either snell gallon or bassett one of the truth um then i guess it's worth it but Tough. you know the thing you said about suarez is 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 concerning to me too about the innings um um i was i was just kind of hoping he'd be really popular somehow so i could play play his guys but probably it's probably better for me that it's probably not going to be the case. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I don't, don't end up playing the A's guys because I'm with you. I think you can play these A's guys if you wanted to. I, I just kind of rather not. Um, mm -hmm. Cole Irvin, like you said, maybe we should be streaming against the, the Angels every uh, every game. Um, but just you just got to have to find the 600 for Snell. You know what I mean? If you're going to play Irvin, I think. Right. You know? um, and or or, or 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 300 less for Gallon. You know. So. Right. Uh, Good plays, but but not. I don't. I don't really think today. Um, yeah, it'd be different if we were talking about pitchers who were like eleven K or ten eight or something at the top, which we don't have today. So you're not getting quite the savings that you'd want. But I, I mean, of all those guys that we've talked about so far, I'm going to go back to the Keegan Thompson is probably the more volatile with the highest upside. I think of all of the. So, uh, I think this last game could be the one to play if you want. Um, I think I think that either of these either of these teams are live to uh, to put up some runs. Um, they just I did mean, against each other the other day. Yeah, the Yankees specifically. Um, mm -hmm. uh, they're always live to put up runs, and and Talion's live to give up some too. You know what I mean? I don't know. Uh, just again, just to do something different. Um, you know what I? You know what my issue is with always playing the Yankees. I always feel as though that because they have the name the Yankees, that they're going to be more owned than they should be otherwise. But as you pointed out, that's really just not the case i mean like the yankees don't get played sometimes mm -hmm. um and maybe this is one of those days where they're not played i mean because you know the mets in toronto really do stand out as far as projections go and stuff like yeah. that so people are going to play them and and who's to say i mean who, who's to say that that the yankees don't put up 10 today or seven or whatever it is and who's to say that the mets in the in kind of a not the greatest ballpark in the world like necessarily put up all these runs against Dunn, although they probably will. Um, right. uh, and who's to say that somehow Jordan Lyles doesn't show up and pitch a gem against Toronto, which is just extremely unlikely. But um, I, guess, I guess both these teams are sort of live at, in G deep GPPs. I guess Seattle in deeper GPPs than the Yankees GPP. So uh, I'm not going to get to either of the pitchers. Um, maybe I can get talked into some of the hitting. Yeah, I think that, like, it's weird because I think Logan Gilbert is a better pitcher than all the other guys we've been talking about. That's so funny. But And the Yankees have strikeouts in their lineups. Like, yeah. he did just get lit up by these guys the other day. Um, and, Take that for and, what it's and, worth, right? Like, Tyon got in and up in that game. That. Yeah, it was also in New York, and it was hot. And then you go to the worst hitters park in baseball, so it's a little harder to get there. I do think outside in this game, though, outside of Judge, I don't think anybody's getting any ownership. Um, so I, I am, a, I am a fan of, of mixing in, look, you could play a one-off of judge, a judge and Hanniger from this game and, and Hanniger, I don't expect to be especially high owned and he's 3,600, uh, Eugenio Suarez has been hot and I think, you know, so he's mildly interesting. Um, he's, he's, I mean, he's, he's, he's got good home run numbers against righties and lefties this season. He used to be more just against lefties, but 
I, I could get involved in this, but it wouldn't be for full stacks for me, I don't think. I think I would be looking at more maybe a Jesse Winker on fan duel, Mitch Hanniger, I like, assuming he's in there, uh, Judge. And then I, I don't, that's the problem with the Yankees. Too. I think Donaldson would be my second favorite Yankee. He's only 4K and he's not going to be owned. But in real in real life, Logan, I mean, uh, yeah, Logan Gilbert is 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 a really solid real life pitcher uh, who you can get to because they're the Yankees. But he is in, you know, he's a better pitcher than the other guys. Like he's better than Gallon is. He's better than obviously Keegan Thompson. He's probably, I mean, he's probably a better pitcher than Bassett going into next year. Maybe not this year, but um, and he's probably going to end up being better than Snell very soon too. So uh, I, I, I would add, by the way, I, I don't, I don't, I think this is actually a very, very poor spot for the Yankees in general. So probably going to offer them. They, they just played a three game series in St. Louis and, mm-hmm. and, and, and yesterday's game was a freaking five hour crap shoot. You know, it was like 12, eight or something like that. Yeah, it was a high. Day, yeah, that was crazy. They were and the day before the I know because my friend's friend brought his kids to the game, the game before, maybe all the games, it was like a thousand degrees. It was so freaking hot there. So the Yankees are coming off a tough, tough weekend physically and then traveling. And you know what I mean? To Seattle has been sitting there waiting at home. You know, I, it's actually a pretty and the and the park, whatever. It's it's mm-hmm. a I think it's a bad spot for the Yankees in general. So mm-hmm. I'm probably gonna probably gonna air to get off of them and maybe, just maybe, maybe you, Gilbert. You, you talk me into Gilbert without knowing it. Um without without intending you to, yeah. to intending to. So I think I think that's actually that's actually a shot. Now again, he's got to you know, he's got to outscore some guys, which means some guys just are not going to perform. But I don't know who knows. I, I think I think he's uh he's gonna I think he's gonna be very low owned, um, mm-hmm. low meaning probably under ten percent, and he's you know and I I I, I, I'm, I can be talked into that. I think you may. Yeah, I think I think that's that's what Gilbert and Thompson are my favorite ways to get a little bit different on the pitching side. I think San Diego, Baltimore, and and to, to some degree, Arizona less, but I don't think Arizona gets that much lower ownership than the other two teams do um, just because they're, they're affordable. I, I think, well, I think they end up in that, they end up with a bunch of guys like double digit, barely double digit own base is where I think Arizona ends up tonight. So um, I, because of that, I will try to prioritize getting in some San Diego and Baltimore bats in my lineup. Um, but I, I kind of like the, the, what you pointed out about the Yankees and, and, Maybe I will go and use some Gilbert after all. Um, just, just for funsies. I mean, we can't put this in because it's like draftings or whatever. Yeah. How about Gilbert and Thompson together? Yeah, there and you then, go. Then, they, nobody's doing that. And then you go Toronto's and then, then Pittsburgh to the triple leverage over Gallon. And then, then, then <laughs> now, 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 now you're, now you're asking for trouble, but Hey, I've asked for worse trouble before. Yeah, you put. I mean, you can, that, that, like that, that's a build nobody else is doing. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. Well, I will be live at six. Sheets, are you going to be around today, you think? Or you'll let me yeah, know? Yeah, after the Steve call. Yeah. Okay, great. All yeah. right. Well, good luck to everybody today. Uh, we'll see you guys at six and uh, let's make some money. Let's get this week started right. Sounds good.